my Lord and my God. I firmly believe that you're here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Jesus, this is John. I'm leaving you this voicemail because I'm a little bit concerned about Judas, he's carried. I don't know, he just seems a bit odd. Especially after that day when the woman came in and anointed your feet in the house of Simon the leper. You probably remember. It was a beautiful gesture by that woman. But Judas was not happy. Obviously, you heard his comment about how that ointment could have been sold and the money could have been given to the poor. You were nice about it. You told him how we would always have poor people amongst us and not you. That made sense to me. Judas was not happy. He's still complaining about it. You probably already know this, but Judas doesn't really care for the poor. Actually, he often steals money from the purse, which he keeps. So maybe that's a little bit what he was intending to do by having all that money there. I don't know. I just have this weird feeling. It's been happening for a while now. Not quite sure when it started, but it's definitely getting worse. And Judas just seems so distant. Actually, this came to my mind because today, when you mentioned that one of us would betray you, I couldn't help but think that it might be Judas. How is this possible, Master? It seems like only yesterday, when we first met you, I mean, Judas was as excited as we all were. And we followed you, and we were, went to listen to you, we met you. And then when you chose us, when you chose him, he couldn't stop just talking about it. He was so excited. He seemed so happy. And actually, for the first couple of years, as we were going with you from one place to another, he seemed just so happy, so fulfilled. Actually, I was always struck how it seemed like he couldn't get his eyes off of you. He would watch you, your every movement. He would listen to you attentively. Sometimes I even caught him taking some notes trying to imitate you in your prayer. I mean, we were like brothers. We truly had a beautiful friendship. We shared things. We talked about you and what we had learned about the things we were doing, how we cast out demons. I mean, it was probably two of the best years of our lives. And we lived them together. Me, Judas, all the rest of the guys. But then something changed. It's hard to pinpoint what it was or when it happened. At first, I guess it was almost imperceptible. I didn't give it much importance. I mean, maybe I thought he was tired. Or he was just concerned about something, but he was not the same. He just didn't seem as happy as he always was. 
started getting a little bit more distant, and slowly it grew worse. I have no idea how this all came to be. But he was just not happy anymore. He was complaining, criticizing the rest of us. He would often go on his own, I don't know where. I tried talking to him about this. I mean, we were still friends. I thought at least we were friends and close, but he wouldn't talk to me about it. Actually, we wouldn't spend that much time together anymore. He wouldn't really open up. He pretended everything was fine. But I, I knew it wasn't. He was not the same. Our friends was not the same. And then it just struck me. That day in Simon's house, it was just too obvious to just avoid it anymore. I mean, I wish I could have helped more, Jesus. I don't know how I could have done it. I wish I can help him now. I have no idea how this whole thing is going to end, but judging by what you said today at table, it definitely doesn't look good. I clearly didn't like the look in his eyes when he left in the middle of dinner. It seemed like he was up to something. Could he really betray you, Lord? I mean, what did you mean by that? You keep talking about this death thing, and I just, it's hard for me to fathom and that one of us would betray you, and, and how? To whom? We got plenty of enemies already, especially among some of the Pharisees who don't like you, but us? I don't know. None of this feels good to me. I'm sure praying for him. Praying for you, Jesus, I don't know. You seem pretty shocked after today's dinner. It was beautiful. Shocking or beautiful how you washed her feet. Even Judas seemed to like it. I don't know. Now I doubt in myself and him. Maybe it was just something else. Lord, I don't know what the purpose of this voicemail is. I just thought I needed to let it all out. And you are obviously the best person to tell. I'm praying for him. I would like to help him. Let me know. If there's anything I can do. Just right now, I don't want to disturb you. You seem so focused in your prayer. And we're here in the Garden of Olives, kind of sleepy. But I don't know. Nor, if you hear this, when you hear it, give me a call or just talk to me. I'll be right here. Hope it's not too late to help poor Judas. I feel for him. I feel for you too, Lord. You don't seem very happy with that. I wouldn't be if one of our own were to betray you. Well, Jesus, I think this is enough. It's been a while. I gotta go now. I get back to my prayer. I gotta wake Simon up. He's still sleeping here. All right, we'll catch you later. Thanks. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, 
intercede for me.